Uh, hey everybody, it's, uh, me, Cog, back again with some more, uh, bronze gaming. Uh, so, let's just get into it. Uh, still playing the same list from last time, if you watched my previous Bird Up video, where I, uh, beat a 60 card branded pile, and, uh, today we're beating a, uh, 60 card Utopia pile, so that's cool. Um... As usual, awesome, we drew Maxi. Uh, should have shot it in the standby phase, I didn't, because I always end up trying to wait for them to normal summon something. Uh, but they never do, they always special summon something first, and I look stupid, so I lost out on a draw there. But, uh, that's okay. Um, they're gonna do their whole combo. I'm just gonna speed up through this. I don't think I draw anything relevant. Uh, I don't think I draw any more hand traps off of this, at least. Nothing that would help me at this moment. Um, so yeah, uh, I do draw another max C, which will be useful next turn. Uh, yeah, and that's the end of his turn. Um, so now it's my turn. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is the thing I always do, which is, uh, play 10 key to beta negate, uh, for realizing that, uh, this is a monster negate, this is also a monster negate, and this is just going to summon Dragnar whatever it's called. You know the one. Uh, a Hope, Titan, a Glad, a Heartbringer. Th the names are too long. The guy, the spell trap negate, that guy. Uh, if I was thinking, I would have done Bird Call first to put Cobalt Sparrow on the field first, but um, whatever, it's fine. Um, so yeah, here I'm going to do 10 Kenny. Uh, he's going to immediately shotgun Dragnar because of course he would. Uh, I chain Maxi because, you know, uh, this is going to be probably my last turn if I'm going up against a spell trap negate and two monster negates. Uh, so I might as well get some draws, you know? Here comes Hope Harbinger... Uh, Dragon... Tit it, it, Titan... Galaxy... That's a horrible name. Hope Harbinger. Um, here I'm doing the Tri-Brigade Yonki Spelunky because I drew free Fractal and of course I'm going to do that. Um, here comes uh, Turquoise Swabbler, because that's the next thing I'm going to do, is get my free special summon out, because if I put any of the monsters on the field, uh, Turquoise Swabbler will shut off. This immediately baits a negate from him, for some reason. We're not going to question why. Um, but, you know, that's one down, which is a lot easier than I expected it to be. Um, here comes Keros, pitching a Fractal, because I already pitched one. I might as well pitch another. Uh, we're doing Keros Banish. Um, to bait another negate uh, before we then normal summon Fractal and uh, spent a long time, but well, not a very long time, I knew, I knew what the line was after I normal summon, after I, after Curse got negated, if he didn't get negated I still would have normal summoned Fractal, uh, but I was going to go into Fairy Sheet either way because I need to get this Cobalt Sparrow out of my hand and if I use Bird Call it's just going to get negated by Hope Harbinger and then I realized, <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna get the Cobalt Sparrow out of my hand, uh, there's Cobalt Sparrow. I get the card. He doesn't negate this one for some reason. Then he used Bird Call like an idiot before realizing that uh, the spell trap negate, or spell, it's just a spell negate. But I mean, who's using traps these days, anyways, except, you know, bat, uh, evenly matched and imperm. Uh, attaches it as material, and he says it has an effect. Oh well. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so I give him another material for free, which was stupid. Um, and obviously now I'm doing the Lyrilis line, uh, Residual Starling, I'm pumping up Farajit here, uh, which will be relevant, because I'm not really thinking too much here, but as soon as I do this, um, and I'm getting the second bird call, which I obviously can't use right now, but that is going to be relevant later, because I love advantage, uh, we're going to another Residual Starling, and then we're going to pump Farajit up to 3100, and this is where the gears start turning. Um, I, I, I shotgun Restable Starlings, uh, not Restable Starlings, uh, Ensemble Blue, or Sapphire Swallows effect to reattach material even though it doesn't fucking do anything. Um, he could have negated that, which would have been bad. Um, I guess that was what I was hoping for. It also kind of chain blocks the attack gain, which is relevant. Um, I think? I, this negate's really fucking weird, man. We're gonna get into it later. Um, anyways. Here, I'm adding Barrel Canary for more follow-up. Uh, and then, we're going into uh, Utopic Future. And normally, you just go into Draco Future. But, Utopic Future has a secret effect! 
where uh, at the end of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you take control of it until the end of the battle phase. Not the end phase, just the battle phase. Which means it's basically just removal if you can crash. So here, I get rid of the Hope Harbinger issue. He's gone. I get rid of this guy's um, reduced to zero effect. And so that way, our Farajit, which we found up to 3100, with the fucking... Uh, oh, they're still underneath it. With the fucking rest of the Starling, is enough to get over it. I, I felt so smart when I did this. Because if I had just gone into Utopic Future, that would not have worked out. Because what would have happened is if I tried to attack this, then he would have just redirected to Hope Harbinger, and he would have reduced my attack to zero. And then, if I tried to attack Hope Harbinger, he would have reduced my attack to zero, and it wouldn't have cleared the field. So the only way to get both of these off the field was this exact line. I mean, maybe not this exact line. I mean, I do have Fairy G to 3100, but you know. This is the most efficient way to do it. So... I felt I felt really good about that. Remembering you topic feature as an effect. And that's too clear. And then the gates are off right now. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. So my thinking here is Utopic Future for insulation. And then I'm gonna do some Lyra Lisk plays, because I can still extend. Uh, get it on some blue robin down in case they try and get any further. Um, yeah, so you know, uh, getting getting on some blue with as much material as I can. Uh, before we go back, and my plan is, uh, I'm expecting him to shotgun this at some point. Uh, what I'm what I'm thinking is, my my line, my idea is, draws, normal summons, Lyrilix, uh bounce, uh, negates, uh, negates, steals, if that makes sense. Uh, but that isn't what happens. He draws, he normal summons, sphere mode, which is bad. Luckily, uh, because I did dumb shit like activating Tenki first, and not Bird Call first, and then getting another Bird Call, even though it really doesn't matter, <coughs> it let me uh, not build a board that was too big, you know, extend too far. Because normally I would've. Uh, but, I didn't. Apex Avian, also being drawn here. Norm huge brick, but helped here, because I didn't overextend, because if I had, I would've gone into a big Link monster like Apollosa, and it would've gotten tributed. Um, so I guess it's bad that I went into the Onset Blue Robin, but, you know, how was I supposed to expect Fear Mode? Uh, anyways. I get the draw, I get Nibiru, which is awesome. I'm expecting, uh, you know, him to go really deep. Um, I'm hoping for, you know, five summons. Uh, I missed this during the game. He pitches Long One. We're gonna get into that. He pitches long. I mean, Sphere Mode was already weird, but, like, I can accept it as, you know, an, an off-meta pick for, like, you know, uh, removal and everything. But he pitches long one, and I totally missed that. And I would have played this very differently if I did. Because what I thought I was going up against... I didn't even look at the card number. 60-card pile. I thought this was a 40-card Utopia, slim, efficient, and he was gonna... And if this was another fucking monster, he was gonna fuck me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Six ways of slam days with another twelve negates from your topic futures and the such. But we go main phase two, and he doesn't attack the sphere mode. And that should have tipped me off, because there was no reason not to attack the sphere mode. Because this is just free material. We're we're gonna hold on to that. My turn. I've got a sphere mode on my field. Awesome. It, it, you know, it's the best I can get. I go into Almarash because, you know, I have that. It's a normal summon monster with less than however much attack. And now there's the bird call from last turn. It gets me Cobalt Spare out. I get more advantage. Uh, it also baits in a gate, which is very important. This is baiting this negate, incredibly important. So that bird call, uh, incredibly smart move for me, uh, which is a little bit egotistical to say, but whatever. Um, Sapphire Swallow comes out. Uh, we went a little bit fast, but whatever. Um, Sapphire Swallow comes out, and I was trying to decide between Barrow Canary or Sapphire Swallow. Should I get a monster from the grave and then follow up with Barrow Canary, but be locked into XCs, or should I try and go for a, um, a, a Link Summit line? Because I'm thinking Zeus uh, with, like, a bunch of material. But um, Twin Sabers... I don't... Twin Saber's negate is really weird, and we're about to see why. Uh, it's really weird, and I wasn't sure if it would be able to negate Zeus, and if it lingered, or if it would stop, um... 
go back into the extra deck. Uh, if it would stop Assembled Nightingale from being able to attack directly, or what. It's weird. I don't like it. Um, so, I go and Link Summon line. Uh, I make Masquerina. Because uh, I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe I can make Apollosa. Uh, Samorg was on there, too. But none of those get over Utopia Ray. You know what does get over Utopia Ray? Access Code. But not for the reasons you think. Because Access Code can't be res cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card effects activations. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to be safe. But I also knew this card is weird as fuck. Because this isn't a card or an effect. It's like a lingering condition. I don't know what. Get a judge. You know, it's, it's not my fucking problem. Uh... But I go into IP, because I know with IP, um, times a thousand, that's two thousand attack, forty three hundred, I can easily get over Utopia, right? So this forces him to spend the ZW negate. But, obviously, people don't just summon access code for the big numbies. He has an effect, and that, by banishing Al Mirage, which I got off of the sphere mode that he left on my field, which I wouldn't have been able to get otherwise without normal summoning this Ash Blossom, and the IP Masquerita that I made to get the higher attack, I wouldn't have been able to clear his field and get rid of the gates and then get in for 23. Main phase 2, end phase, you know, I'm, I'm running really low on time at this point, so that was actually just straight to end phase, but, um, you know, I've got like 30 seconds left on the clock. Down comes Ascended Sage, down comes Automata Pickup, horrible, but I have the Ash Blossom in hand still because he left the Sphere Mode on my field, which let me make out Mirage. Then, Ash Blossom, the Automata Pickup, no more cards added to hand. Um, so I don't have to worry about needing to use this Nibiru, which would have been my backup plan if he did, if you know, if I didn't have the Ash. Uh, my turn, I draw fucking Apex Avian again. Awesome, whatever. Keep him low on cards, attack over Ascended Sage. All he's got is Autumn on a pickup, which doesn't do anything, it just makes levels equal. So as long as he doesn't draw anything good, but sometimes he's just good! I don't know why he's playing Averse, but he's shuffling all these fucking huge boss monsters back in, and he draws two, and he summons Utopic Onomatopita, and he passes. And he passes. And I was so happy, because there is no reason that he should not have just slammed out another four, and gone and done the whole line again, and would have felt like shit. But he doesn't. He just puts it down, and I'm like, he must have drawn a spell. He must have drawn a spell, like a rank-up spell. And and without another monster, he can't do anything, and so he passes back. And I draw, and who but my savior, Nerval, to wrap up the game. At this point, I already know I've won. But we're being safe. Uh, Omen's down. We're banishing the uh, Onomatopoeia, just to keep the field clean. And I'm banishing Farajit, just to get the continuous spell off the field. I'm taking no chances. I don't want him to be able to extend at all. He's at 300 life. I pass back, he draws for turn, and he ends his turn, and I've won the game. But but we're being safe! I, I know what Utopia's- also oh, draw back C, just, <laughs> you know, because why not? Just draw back C! Uh, Dragon Lords into Apex Avian, because I know Utopia's all about negating, and I don't want this guy to have, I don't know, an in archetype battle fader, or just battle fader, he's already got fucking long one, and sphere mode, and avarice in here. So, at this point, I wasn't really thinking about it, but I was thinking this was just, like, a, a bad Utopia deck, which would still be consistent, because, you know, Utopia is fairly consistent. Um, but no, this is actually just a pile. Um, but I'm making Apex Avian just to be safe. And I attack with Apex Avian. The game is over. And you would not believe... <laughs> The adrenaline coursing through my veins <laughs> as I found those lines and shut the game out. Because there was no reason I should have normally gotten through that. I played through three negates really badly, <laughs> but still, three negates with Max C. But still, three negates with, tri with you know, with Bird Up. Um, you know, it, in broads. This was, this was my second game of the day, and then I stopped playing because I had to come and record this. So, uh, obviously... I, uh, I can't end it off without showing his deck off. I mean, just look at it. I'm, I'm amazed he was even able to put up that board. Shadow Mist, Vion, Stratos, the fucking uh, 
Obelisk, Ra, all of the Ra's? That's why he... But, but that's why he left Sphere Mode on the field. He was going to use it to go into Ra. Which is terrifying. But also, you know, I mean, like, who the fuck would leave that on the field? Are you serious? Uh, uh, I mean, it's just free link material. And I'm playing Tri Brigade. But thankfully, I did have Alma Rush link off it. You know, I mean... Don't play piles. <laughs> don't play piles. <laughs> God. So, all those times I thought he drew a spell. He might have drawn a spell. But more likely, he drew one of these heroes or a god card. This? Why? We've got Scarlight and Baron and... <laughs> He's got his own, he's on his own Utopic Future line. Uh, it's just a mess. And I'm amazed that he put up such a you know a resilient board. Uh, that looked hard to crack, but I did. Um but if he wasn't playing a pile, I probably wouldn't have. Um Especially with some of those plays, really sloppy, not shotgunning Maxi in standby. Um, ten key before bird, uh, bird call, despite the fact that I knew he was just gonna go into Harp Heart. Hope, Harbringer. <sighs> and he's even got Zeus. Why didn't he use Zeus? Whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, finally a, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary. <laughs> uh, let me pause and go uh, show my deck off again, just for people who ask. And, uh, here's my bird up list. Bog standard as hell. Well, not really. No one's playing this deck anymore. Uh, but, uh, this list used to play two desires, and I swapped it out for three talents. Uh, because fuck desires, man. <laughs> Why was it playing desires when we're playing Apex Avian? I don't get it. Uh, but yeah, um, with the desires gone, I can play a one of Nibiru, a two of Droll, uh, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, without having to worry about banishing my one ofs. Uh, so that's a huge plus. And, and, and we can play Wagtail at 1, Barrel Canary at 2, Sapphire Swell at 2. Uh, because in the Desires uh, build, uh, we used to play everything at 3. Um, so, so now we don't have to. Now we can have different ratios. Uh, because you don't really want to draw Barrel. You do want to draw Barrel Canary. If you don't really want to draw Wagtail. Um, and you always want to draw Turquoise Wobbler. So. And uh, this sometimes, and Cobalt Sparrow, you've got like a billion ways to get it out, so it's always nice to have because it's just advantage. I love advantage. Um, some play three Tenki, but I don't like drawing two Tenki and then going into two Fractal. And the, you know, you, I'm, this is five Fractal. You don't need the sixth Fractal. It, it, you you want to draw your layer lists then. So two fra uh, two Tenki, three Fractal you know, five, you're always going to see at least one Tri-Brigade. Um, so that's the idea there. Um, and, yeah, uh, one Kit, because you don't want to draw it, one Keras, because you don't want to draw it, one Apex Avian, because obviously you don't want to draw it, and then uh, Nibiru and Droll with Crossout. Uh, two Droll, because it's a level one, which can help with your um, Lyrilisk plays, and also because Droll is just a good card. And it's also a super rare, <laughs> so I don't have to use UR dust on it. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.